Hello, and welcome to Cisco ASA Training 101. My name's Don Crawley. I'm from soundtraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based publisher of learning resources and provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. This time, we're installing a VPN certificate, and this is actually any digital identity certificate. Uh, we're going to focus on VPN because this is a companion video to another video where we have on actually setting up a remote access VPN. But what we're going to show you here will work for any type of digital identity certificate. This video is the companion to Chapter 8 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance. The book is not required for the video, but if you'd like to get a copy, I'd love for you to have one. And it's available from Amazon and other resellers or online at our bookstore at soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Our ASA software version is 9.11. And the ASDM version is 7.1, but if you're using a fairly recent version, maybe it's not 9.11, maybe it's 8.4, the procedures are going to be very similar, and uh, so you should find this uh, video valuable and helpful in setting up your VPN. Here's the network diagram for the exercise. You're going to need a management workstation at 192.168.101.2 connected via both Ethernet and serial console cable to an ASA. The one I'm using is a 5505, but you can use any ASA for this. Um, it needs to be configured with the inside and outside addresses, as you see in the diagram. And then you'll also need a connection to the public Internet as well. Here are the specific software requirements. As we mentioned, a Cisco ASA 5505 or 102040 50 security appliance with a base license. You'll need one computer serving as a management workstation connected to the inside interface on the ASA, including Java support in your browser, a console cable connected to the serial port on the management workstation and the console port on the ASA, and terminal emulation software such as PuTTY. You could also use Secure CRT or uh, TerraTerm or even HyperTerminal for what we're doing here. I'm going to use PuTTY. Prerequisites. In order to do this exercise, you need to have some comfort working in the command line environment. Really, whether it's Cisco, Unix, Linux, even Windows PowerShell doesn't matter, but you're going to be typing some commands, and so it's helpful to have done that before. Also, you'll need unrestricted privilege mode access to a Cisco ASA security appliance. Here's a summary of the steps. There's really just five. You'll generate a new RSA key pair. You'll generate the certificate signing request, also known as a CSR. You'll upload the CSR to a certificate authority, also known as a CA. You'll wait for the CA to send the certificate. How long that takes depends on the CA. Sometimes it's a matter of a few minutes, and other times it's a matter of a few days, and maybe they need to verify who you are. Again, that just depends on the certificate authority. Once you get the uh, certificate back from the CA, you'll install it on the ASA, and you'll be done. Here's your disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. There are no guarantees whatsoever. Do not attempt these procedures on a production firewall without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. Performing these procedures may open your firewall to the public Internet and subject your network to attack, so make sure you have current backups and take precautions including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. So let's do the demo. First thing we're going to do is we're going to generate the RSA key pair, and we're going to do that in the command line environment. Then we'll switch over to the ASDM. And I'll tell you, I make decisions about whether to use the CLI or the GUI based solely on whichever is easier, and I don't really care one way or the other. Uh, this particular task is easier to do in the command line, and so that's why we're going to do it here. All right, so let's go into the uh, configuration mode on the firewall with the command configure terminal. We'll abbreviate that conf space T. And we'll use the crypto family of commands. So we'll do crypto key generate RSA label digicert dot key modulus 2048. Let me explain what this means. I'll go ahead and get it started doing the uh, generation of the key while I explain it because this will take a couple of minutes. First of all, crypto invokes the cryptographic family of commands cryptographic services. Key simply means that we're going to generate a crypto key or get information about it. Generate means we'll generate the key. RSA is the key type. Label uh, is just a, a text string that we're going to attach to the, the key so we know what it uh, means. And in this case, we're going to call it digicert.key. Um, the reason that I chose digicert.key is because we're going to use digicert as the certificate authority. There are many different certificate authorities. I'm not recommending them in particular, but uh, they do offer a 30-day trial, which is why I chose to 
I use them for this demonstration. Um, the uh, modulus is the key length, and our key length that we're using is 2048 bits. Now, when you do that, when you make a change, if you have the ASDM open, it's going to whine about it. And so here it is complaining about changes made to the running config, not in the ASDM, so it wants us to refresh it. And we'll go ahead and do that now, and then we'll go back to the command line uh, environment for a couple of commands I want to show you. So we'll let it refresh, and we'll go back to the CLI. So once again, we're in the CLI. Let's just uh, show you the key that we just generated. So we're going to use the command show crypto key my pub, oops, my pub key and RSA. So it's going to show us all of our RSA keys. There's a default key pair, and then there's the one that we just generated. So here we go. Right, there's the default, and at the bottom, you can see the one we just generated. Notice where it says at the top, default RSA key for the key name, and then toward the bottom it says uh, key name is digicert.key. Uh, that's the one we just generated. We'll touch the spacebar to continue, and there they are. That's kind of handy. Now let's go back to the uh, GUI, to the ASDM, Adaptive Security Device Manager, and let's finish the exercise here. So let's go to Configuration, and we're going to come down to Device Management, and we're going to come up to Certificate Management, we're going to choose Identity Certificates, and we're going to come over and choose Add. We'll choose Add a New Identity Certificate. We will choose our new key pair that we just generated, digicert.key. Now let's come here under Common Name, let's complete it. So what it really wants here is a fully qualified domain name, a, an FQDN. So let's do ASA01, that's just the host name on the ASA that I gave it. And then we'll complete it with soundtraining.net. And we're going to go ahead and click on Add Certificate. Notice that it gives you a preview of the CLI commands. I actually configure my ASDM to do that um, under Tools, Preview Commands. That's kind of a handy thing to do. Maybe yours does or doesn't. But I like to see that so that I can learn more of the uh, command line commands. This is a handy way to do that. We'll click on Send for a moment. Now it's offering to save the CSR to a file, so let's do that. Let's cl uh, click on Browse, and I like to keep it on my desktop. It's just easier to do it that way. So we'll call this digicert.key.txt. Click on Save As. Click on OK. And here it says the CSR was saved successfully. And we'll click on OK to get out of that. Now, let's go take a look at it. Go to my desktop. And we'll open this up just to take a look at it. But it's more than just taking a look at it because we need to copy it because we're going to go to the DigiCert website. And I'm going to do that offline. You don't need to watch me go through all that. Um, and I'll paste it into a uh, form on the DigiCert website. So we'll use a Control-A to select all. Control C to copy, and then I'm going to go to the DigiCert website. You'll go to your CA, whatever that is, whether it's Intrust or Komodo or VeriSign or, or DigiCert, whomever, and follow their instructions for uh, submitting a certificate signing request. Then they will ultimately email you back the signed uh, certificates, and you'll upload those to the firewall. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to DigiCert, I'm going to upload this, and then I'll wait for the signed certificates to come back, and I'll show you how to upload those into your firewall. So it took about 20 minutes for DigiCert to respond, and that's going to vary from one certificate authority to the next, so um, just you'll have to wait for however long it takes. Uh, we did have to do some confirmation. We got an email wanting to confirm that we were in control of that particular domain name, soundtraining.net, and I confirmed that. But all total, about 20 minutes. So now, let's go ahead and install the certificates. And we're going to have to install two. We're going to have to install an intermediate or chain certificate file for DigiCert, and then we'll install the asa.soundtraining.net uh, certificate file as well. So we'll start with CA certificates over on the left-hand side of the ASDM. We're going to select CA Certificates. Then we're going to choose Add. We'll choose to install from a file, and then we'll browse to the location where we downloaded the certificates from DigiCert. And we're going to choose the DigiCert CA. 
Now you can't see it, but it has a .crt extension, and that's just a certificate file. So we'll go ahead and choose that, click on Install, and then we'll come down to the bottom and choose Install Certificate. There's the certificate itself, and we'll click on Send. And the certificate was installed successfully. Now you may or may not see the preview of the commands that it's sending to the ASA. That just depends on how you've got your ASDM configured, but as I mentioned earlier, I kind of like to do that. We'll click on OK. Now we have to install the identity certificate for ASA01.soundtraining.net. So we're going to click on Identity Certificates. We're going to select the certificate that we generated earlier. This is where we actually generated the private keys. And now we're going to come over and choose the Install button. Click on Install. And once again, it asks to install from a file. So we're going to browse to our old buddies where we had them before. And there is ASA01 underscore sound training underscore net. We'll click on Install ID Certificate File. And Install Certificate. Same thing as before, previewing the command. And the certificate import was successful. We'll click on OK. And now, if we take a look up here, you can see that uh, the associated trust points are there. The usage is described as general purpose. And the public key type is the RSA 2048-bit key that we set up. And if you look over here, you can see who it was issued to and issued by Digicert. So we're all set. And in our next video, I'll show you how to associate this certificate with a remote access VPN. If you'd like more information, we've got lots of online resources for you. Visit our website at www.soundtraining.net. I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog, and in fact, you can find these procedures detailed in a blog post at my blog. You can subscribe to our newsletter at soundtraining.net slash newsletter. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. If you'd like more videos, they're available on our video channel at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. If you'll subscribe there, then you'll get a notification when we upload new ones, which is about once a week, sometimes more, occasionally less. And if you'd like the companion book, I'd love for you to have a copy of it. It's available at our bookstore at soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Well, I hope it's been helpful for you. For soundtraining.net, I'm Don Crawley, and I'll see you next time.